double bass drum. Playing the drum set with two bass drums or a double pedal is not only an absolute must for anyone who wants to play heavy metal, but is by now so widespread that it can actually be seen as one of the basics of drum set playing. In this video, I would like to give you an introduction to this topic, regardless of whether you are a beginner or have been playing for a while and now want to devote yourself to the double bass drum. I'll explain the basics to you, show you everything and later give you a whole bunch of hands-on exercises. This video is really densely packed, so you get the most out of it if you are active with it, meaning take notes, stop the video and try something out and maybe even mimic what I do directly on the drum set or practice pad. This way you can get much more out of it than if you just let all this wash over you. You can also use this video and my entire series on the subject of foot technique as a reference work and also use the chapter function to always jump to the topic that you want to devote yourself to. The link to the full playlist is in the description below. And there you will also find a link to a PDF with notations of all the exercises and variations summarized to a clear exercise plan. At the end of the series, there will also be a Q&A video in which I answer all your questions, which you can write to me in the comments, or you can send me an email with a short video of you, then I can help you even more specifically and others can benefit from it too. If you benefit from this video, then please make sure that I do too, because I put a lot of time and money into these videos and only if you help can I continue to do so. The simplest way is to just like and comment this video so the algorithm notices that this video is relevant and will show it to more drummers. So you also help others too this way. And now let's get started. I assume you know what I mean by heel up and heel down and have a basic understanding of kick drum technique. If you are still missing these basics, you're welcome to watch the first two videos in this series. Since we mostly use the double bass drum in louder music, I think it makes sense to play everything heel up. If you still prefer to play with your heel down, you can of course simply transfer all this to your playing style. In this video I'm playing a Darwin FTW pedal by ACD Unlimited, which I can highly recommend because it's super smooth and you can adjust everything as you like. But as long as your pedal isn't rusty, the moving parts aren't worn out and it's set up reasonably well, you can do everything I show you with just about any pedal. The same applies to whether you prefer to play, play barefoot, in socks or with shoes. By the way, please tell me in the comments how you prefer to play barefoot or with shoes and with which kind and why. That would be a very interesting survey, so please write it to me now. I play with drumming shoes by v -Radum. I'll tell you why and what the advantages and disadvantages of shoes are in one of the next videos. If you're subscribed or watch the entire playlist in order, you won't miss it. We should answer one question in advance, namely that of right or left footedness. I know that there are some who play the bass drum with their strong foot but still start continuous double bass hits with the other foot. Or some are left handed but still play on a right handed set and are now wondering whether the left foot should be the leading one or not. No variation is better or worse than the other. But I would still recommend the following. Whichever foot you usually play the bass drum with when you're not playing double bass drum is the leading one. We'll see what that means later. It doesn't have to be your strong foot, by the way, because think about it, the other foot actually has more to do now, namely play the second bass drum pedal and the hi-hat. That's actually even more challenging. It's more about choosing the variation you're comfortable with and then committing to it and practicing consistently. Nevertheless, I sometimes say strong foot and mean the one that has played the bass drum up to now. When I talk about my right foot, I always mean the leading one. And that brings us right to the heart of the matter and our first exercise. The foot that plays the second bass drum or the so-called slave pedal now has to get used to playing the bass drum as well. The nasty thing about it is that the technique is different than on the hi-hat, but only slightly so that you can get confused. So first task is to practice the basic technique of hitting the bass drum with the second foot and feel the difference to the hi-hat. Feel free to use my two videos on the subject from the beginning of the series. Even if you've been playing for a while, it makes a lot of sense to take the time to do it again. You can also compare the movement of the two feet by playing alternately or even at the same time.
Since most of the time we play the hi-hat so that we have a short note or keep the heel up when we hold it closed, the foot is much more used to pressing into the pedal. But since we almost always use the double bass drum when we make fast strokes, we have to get used to letting the beater jump back. Let's practice this difference with our second foot. Play four hits on the hi-hat and four hits on the bass drum, always alternating. On the hi-hat you have more tension in the ankle and on the bass drum pedal you roll off a little more, especially when you play slower. To improve your control and also your balance, you should include different variations. So not only play 4 and 4, maybe 2 and 2, 8 and 8, or even 16 and 16, and also play this in different tempos, so you can really control the movement in different speeds. Now, of course, the foot needs a bit of training on the bass drum. So a very obvious exercise is this. Play some easy grooves and later some more difficult ones with your second foot. You can play it on the right cymbal or on the hi-hat. You can also keep it permanently fixed if you like. You can also switch between your feet to see if it sounds exactly the same with both. You should spend a few days with these basic exercises as preparation. But the basics are never finished after all. Therefore, all of the following exercises are not a step-by-step -step plan, but you can alternate them and weigh them differently depending on where your weak points lie. And you can and should practice the basic exercises again at the same time. Now we really want to play continuous single strokes with a double bass drum. So that's exactly what we're practicing. Just play alternating hits, making sure that they're exactly the same volume and also evenly spaced. We should practice this in context from the start because a very common problem with the double bass drum is that the hands play a beat and the feet just play fast strokes that don't rhythmically match. Therefore be sure to play along with the metronome, set it to quarter notes and play sixteenth notes with your feet always four notes per pulse, starting with your strong foot. Don't be surprised if it's still difficult at first. Below 90 beats per minute it's actually more difficult for the balance, since we only really start to make fluent, continuous strokes with our feet at this tempo. It's always good to practice slowly and precisely, but then also try to play faster because it can be easier then. Playing clean 16th notes at 100 BPM is a good goal to start with. By the way, another tip. The pedals should be positioned in such a way that both legs move exactly the same. For this, they need to have the same distance from the body. A typical mistake is that the slave pedal is significantly closer to the body. Of course it sounds different then. 
So make sure that you sit as symmetrically as possible and remember that this also means that the bass drum is not directly in front of you but at an angle as it follows the natural direction of the foot. I have summarized the best and healthiest way to set up the drums in another video which, which I will link again here. If you still find this exercise difficult then there is a trick and now I will show you what I meant by the leading foot. If you play continuous 16th notes then the foot that starts is always on the 8th notes. For me it's the right one. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 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 And you can use this as a guide because 8th notes are easier to count than 16th notes. Also you can use this as a startup aid. You count yourself in with a strong foot. It plays 8th notes and then the second foot joins in playing exactly alternately and you have clean 16th notes. You can also play this alternately keeping your strong foot on the 8th notes the whole time. This is then a kind of interval training for the left foot and increases your awareness of timing and improves your precision. And if your single strokes are not clean yet you can pause the second foot while the leading one just keeps playing the 8th notes and then you get back into the flow of 16th. So this can be very helpful but please don't practice this too often because this way you always have one foot dependent on the other. And that's not what we want. We need the independence even between the two feet to play really clean exact single strokes on the double bass drum. By the way in the next video I will show you an amazing exercise how you can practice your weaker foot also its independence so your single strokes will sound even more convincing. Speaking of dependent the next step is to add the hands of course in the right rhythm but still independently because a typical problem is that the leading hand wants to play exactly together with the leading foot and then you can no longer detach yourself from it. Again this helps with orientation in the beginning but makes life more difficult later and doesn't sound so good. So our exercise now is this. You play 16th notes with your feet and your hands play a very simple accompaniment of 8th notes and quarter notes on the right or hi-hat. First individually, then alternately. The snare drum plays the backbeat that is the 2 and 4. Start slow, maybe 70 to 80 BPM and work your way up to 100 or even 110. But not just in increments of 5 or 10 because if you do this all the time you will eventually only be able to play those tempos. Go in steps of 7 or start with 81 and so on. You may find it difficult to play quarter notes with the leading hand. It sometimes adapts to the cycle of the foot. That's very typical. But consciously detach yourself from it and intentionally make a big movement so that the hands and feet learn to play independently of each other. If that works you can play along with even more difficult rhythms with your hands or even try playing over it completely freely to get used to the double bass drum running through as an ostinato, as a constant bass. And of course you can and should increase the tempo if you are relaxed 
and everything is precise. But we have to keep in mind that we have to adapt our technique and also our posture at different speeds. Both feet are now in constant motion and this is very challenging for your balance. In a previous video I showed you a great exercise for this and even uploaded it again as a separate video for you to participate in. But since it's so helpful I want to show it to you again specifically for the double bass drum. The idea is very simple. You play continuous single strokes, start very slowly and keep increasing until you reach your personal maximum tempo and then slow down again. It is important that you only go as far as you are still loose and relaxed and the strokes are precise and that you consciously perceive how it feels, where you change the technique on your own and where you should actively do so in order not to compensate with strength because then you just tense up and block your way to the higher tempos. And you should take your time with this because I often see students pushing themselves to the limit within a few seconds and then very quickly dropping back down to a slow tempo. So first find out what your personal maximum speed is, the tempo where you can still control it and then you set your metronome in such a way that it gradually increases the tempo up to that point slowly, maybe even over several minutes and then decreases again in a very controlled manner. Because close to your maximum tempo it can get a bit sloppy and on the way down you want to get all the control back. Start at about 60 beats per minute. At this speed you still have to make individual strokes with each foot between which you also have a short rest phase but then you consciously feel the transition to a continuous fluent movement. Where exactly that is depends on your seat height, your pedal and its settings. For me it's somewhere between 70 and 80 bpm but only above 100 I really find it comfortable. But that can be completely different for you. I'll go through this exercise for you now and also show you what happens as I adapt my technique. This is only a guide and may be different for you but it can give you some pointers what to look out for. At first it is just important to analyze and feel very closely. I play all the strokes from the whole leg, only from 145 bpm upwards do I play more with the ankle. Some only use this ankle technique at a much higher speed so this is definitely an advanced technique so you don't have to worry about it just yet but now you know it exists and can move on to it later if you want to play even faster.
This kind of interval training is a great method to increase your maximum speed because you always go up to your limit and back, relaxed and with control, but this exercise is not primarily about just pushing the limit. We want to be able to consciously control all tempos. If you want to understand a subject, then memorizing just a few paragraphs from a textbook will do you no good. You then lack the connections and the overview. You must read it through carefully. And as a beginner, you'll get more out of reading a fundamentals book than one for the advanced reader, where you understand just very little. So be honest and only play as far as you can really control, even if that's just 100 BPM. And if a tempo range gives you problems, then be brave and devote yourself to exactly this spot until it works. So just play the small area up and down again and again. I promise you, you will get a lot more from this. In the studio or on stage, you're often thrown back to basics. So training them will get you a lot further. You will make a much better impression and can make music much better when you can really control everything you play instead of playing one thing very fast. And funnily enough, you'll definitely practice playing fast with it too. Because if you master the basics, play precisely and relaxed, you are able to quickly increase the tempo. Like so many of the exercises in this series, this isn't something you do a few times and then never again. I always do this to this day when I'm working on my double bass drum playing. This is how helpful this exercise is, because it creates an awareness of what is happening. If you know when and where to adjust the technique, nothing can stress you out anymore. You are always in control. For me, this exercise was a real game changer. It's also more of a pra practice concept that you can, of course, adapt. You play it up to your current maximum tempo. You can use it as a great warm-up exercise or choose a tempo range that you want to work on again. The important thing is, this exercise does not work by itself. You have to be very conscious about it. Regain your control and relaxation again and again. And that's exactly what you should do now. Spend a little time with these basic exercises. Always take notes, how fast you played, what went well and what didn't go so well, so that you can measure your progress. In the PDF, in which you will find all the exercises summarized again with a few variations and also some additional tips, there's also space to note your progress. So it is a real practice plan. You can easily download it now for a donation of your choice, which also supports this channel and ensures that I can continue to make videos for you. And the nice thing is, everyone can give as much as they can and want to. Thank you very much for your support. And if you still haven't had enough, then you may click here for the next part of this series with some advanced exercises for the double bass drum. See you there, take care and bye bye.